G'day YouTube, 1MJ here, welcome back. Well, Tuesday and the market's up, so we've had a little bit of a pump, but beware, we might have a bit of a retracement coming. Who knows, we'll just have to wait and see. But the market's up, but just only a few moments ago, this was 370 billion, so it's already pulled back uh, $1 billion, so we'll have to see which way the market's gonna go. But it is still trending up, which is nice. Uh, 11,749 for Bitcoin, uh, that is pretty good, that's not too bad. We're getting back up to around that kind of $12,000 mark, but you know we'll have to wait and see whether we can break that. But a lot of the alts are bleeding at the moment, and they've been going down for quite some time. Let's have a look, were there any big movers? All right, Dash, there you go, pretty good move. And then everything else is just kind of single digit moves and not too big a moves really other than Dash. That's the only one that's really moved pretty well, but let's have a look about losers. All right, there we go. So Aave uh, has taken uh, quite a hit, uh, quite a hit actually. So there we go, some big double digit uh, dumps. Uh, that's not really good. Synthetics Network continues to go down, so waiting to find a bottom before I get back into Synthetics Network. But I am going to get back into Synthetics Network. I'm just waiting for it to find a bottom, uh, and then I'll absolutely be getting back in. Synthetics Network, in my opinion, and it's just personal opinion, not financial advice, is a great platform. And I still really like Aave as well. Uh, I'll buy some more Aave. I'll get back into that. You know, they're regulated over uh, in Europe. Uh, and they're doing things in other places around the world. So I believe these uh, will come back and they'll come back really hard. Elrond, uh, there we go, taking a bit of a hit. We can see a lot of the uh, DeFi protocols are really taking a hit at the moment. Nexus Mutual, I mean, that's come down. But that's to be expected. These are the ones that pumped really, really hard in that kind of mini bull run that we had. So of course they're going to cool off and come back. That's just what they do. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, again, I think once Bitcoin gets past that $12,500 mark, um, you know, things will start to move fairly quickly after that. But I don't think the altcoins will really start to move again until after Bitcoin gets to around that 20000 or beyond mark. I think once Bitcoin gets there, we'll see the altcoins start to do fairly well. But until then, uh, I think they're probably just going to keep bleeding off for a while. But again, I could be wrong. We'll have to wait and see. But there we go, that BTC dominance, it's starting to grow. And I expect this to grow considerably more. I think we're gonna get well into the 60s and maybe even up into the 70% uh, Bitcoin dominance uh, over the next sort of few weeks to months. Uh, I believe Bitcoin will continue to move and when it starts to make its way past that $14,000 mark, a lot of people are gonna be jumping into Bitcoin and they're gonna be uh, moving out of the altcoins. So that is a good, you know, possible uh, get in point for some of these uh, altcoins if you didn't have a chance keep an eye on them They'll probably keep coming down for a little while and Bitcoin will keep moving up But again, we'll have to wait and see but something that I found that's interesting All right, let's go and have a look at the Dixie so we can get rid of this line now. We don't need this anymore. This is long gone All right, anytime there we go remove so that was broken ages ago. But we can see the Dixie's been sort of trading sideways and, you know, slightly gaining ground. What about gold? Let's have a look at gold. So gold's been sort of trading sideways, but even sort of slightly coming down. So the Dixie's been moving up a little bit. Gold's been going down. What about the S&P 500? So it had a fairly big dip, started to pump up, and then it's sold off again so it's basically uh heading down but that's not to say it'll last forever so basically our assets are coming down in price and the dixie is getting stronger slightly ever so slightly more sideways really than upwards movement but it is a slight uptrend for the dixie so that would mean that bitcoin should be following these sort of you know bitcoin didn't have this big massive dip exactly but it did have a dip well, let's have a look at Bitcoin. It is bucking the trend. So it is on an upward trajectory, but as we can see, it is finding a little bit of resistance here at the moment at this $11,700 mark. Now this move here is reminding me of this move a little bit, just smaller and in a shorter time frame. But we had this big move, got a bit choppy, went up some more, choppy, up some more, and then we got up to here, and then we had this. So I'm just keeping an eye out for this, that if maybe it pumps up to around about this $12,200 mark, that we don't then have a pullback 
back down to sort of around about here-ish and we cover that CME gap. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. I'm just keeping an eye out because this, again, reminds me a little bit of this. There was some real exuberance. We got really excited and then it fell off. But again, this is the trend line I'm really watching. I believe this trend line is going to hold. This has been well and truly negated. I can probably move it, but I just want to hold it until we get past this point. And then I know that when this is um, you know, not something that we may come back and test because we could come back and test this again in the next few days. I don't see that happening, but it's just possible. So until we get past this mark, I'm just going to leave this here. But really, this has been negated. This is the trend line I'm watching for now. And I believe this trend line is not going to be broken anytime soon. Again, I think institutional buyers are in the market and they are buying up Bitcoin slowly but surely. And the price is just going to continue to rise. But that's not to say we won't see sell-offs like this or even more like this. You know, 20, 30% corrections, they are going to be possible. Uh, I'm just not sure if we'll see a whole lot of them anytime soon. This is the key mark we're looking for. We get past that $12,500 mark, I think things are going to move very quickly. And we're going to get up to here. We're going to get up to that sort of $13,800 level. So we'll zoom out a little bit. $13,800 level. I think we will reject off that. Uh, come back down and probably retest this. If we don't come back and retest this, I just think we'll probably get a bit of a rejection from here. But I think once we actually break through and stay above this, we are going to very quickly come up and test the all-time highs. And I do think it'll happen this year. I think it's probably going to happen around sort of December. Now, look, I could be wrong. I think it's definitely going to happen after the elections. I can't see it happening before. Uh, we got to wait for, you know, the stimulus and things to happen. But again, once we clearly break through here, and we could just go straight through. We might not uh, hit this and come back down and retest this. We could just break straight through. It's possible. But I think once we break through this, we're going to quickly get up to here. There's really not much here. There's a little bit sort of around there. You could say sort of the fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars $16,000 level, but not a whole lot. I say we move from here to here very quickly, and maybe we get rejected from here fairly quickly and sort of come back down and test these levels or maybe even this level. We'll have to wait and see. Maybe we're just on a complete and utter mad rocket ship and this is ready to explode uh, and just continue to go. We'll see. All right, some interesting stories. Institutional Bitcoin longs at record high hedge funds are shorting. For the uh, This is from the CME data. Now, because there's so many longs, that makes me worried. Let's have a look at the fear and greed index. What is that telling us? I'm going to say it's probably a little bit high on the greed side. So that's what makes me fearful. Now, I don't always kind of uh, take this as gospel, but it is starting to lean towards the greed side. So again, and particularly if there's a lot of longs at the moment, then I would say a retracement is probably coming. But this isn't too bad at the moment, but it is slightly getting towards that kind of bullish side. So uh, be wary at the moment is all I would say that we could have a pullback coming. Uh, no guarantees. Again, it's still more neutral than anything, but it is starting to lean towards this greenish bullish side. All right. So again, institutions, they're all longing, but the hedge funds are shorting. Now, there's no exact um, you know, reason why they might be doing that. Uh, and it does go in here to say that it may be about liquidity and things like that. And I won't read through the whole thing, but we'll just go through a little bit. According to CME, the amounts of Bitcoin long contracts held by institutions are at an all-time high. Yet CME's most recent uh, commitment uh, of trader reports shows hedge funds are at a record high for Bitcoin shorts. So they're going the other way. There seemingly is a major difference in the perception of Bitcoin's short to medium term trend between hedge funds and institutions. Hedge funds typically implement varying strategies to generate returns for investors. Oftentimes, hedge funds will utilize derivatives and employ a more high risky strategy, and that might be something that they're doing. In contrast, institutional investors uh, who are allocating a percentage of their portfolio to Bitcoin likely have a longer term strategy. So in the short term, we could be bearish, but long term, everyone's thinking bullish at the moment. This means they are not concerned about the short uh, to medium term performance of Bitcoin. And that's exactly where I am. I'm an investor, not really a trader. Again, I do a bit of swing trading, but it's easier just to invest. First, read the chart. Read the charts. <laughs> Sorry, read the charts. Understand what you're investing 
And then again, we go back to this Bitcoin chart. We'll get rid of this. If you've looked at Bitcoin for years and years and years, and you see that it just constantly moves up, but you know, it has pullbacks and things like that, and that it has been higher before, and it's come down, and now it's starting to move back up again. Again, if you've done a little bit of research and you understand, this is probably not a bad time to get involved. Not financial advice, just my personal opinion. Again, I've got involved sort of back down here, roughly around 5,400 to sort of 7,400 is where I made my position in Bitcoin. Uh, and again, you know, I'm not rich, so it's not like I put, you know, tens, hundreds of thousands or anything like that into Bitcoin. I just put what I could in. And I've also put into Ethereum and a few other projects. And now I'm just dollar cost averaging uh, on top of those. So any losses, they're only small losses for the dollar cost average stuff. My main position was put back in down here and more in sort of the high six to $7,400 range, but I did get a tiny bit of Bitcoin at sort of that $5,400 range. So again, now I can handle all this because I'm just not too worried. But again, even if I invested here and it fell back down to here, as long as I understood the charts that we've been higher before and Bitcoin constantly is going up and down, but over the longer term it generally goes up, whatever the shorter term um, you know, volatility is, I just sit back and sort of relax and try not to worry. It's not that you don't worry at all. Of course, sometimes I do. And you know, there's still always that thought, gee, what happens if something drastic happens? Well, look, if something drastic happens, everything's, you know, basically going to zero or, you know, going much lower and there's nothing we can do about it. And only the absolute smartest of the smartest will be able to avoid that. And look, I don't know anyone who's that smart because if they were that smart, they would just be the richest people in the world and they're not telling us uh, what the smart thing to do is. They're keeping that to themselves because they just want to be richer. And look, I don't hold that part against them. Everyone wants to be richer and better off. So Ethereum 2.0. It sounds like it's about to happen and there's talk it might happen this week. Now, not the staking part. Staking's possibly going to come later in the year, but they're just going to set up the contracts to get ready to turn your Ethereum over into 2.0. So an Ethereum 2.0 developer predicts the protocol's deposit contract will be released in a matter of days. That on ETH, uh, that, and that ETH 2.0 staking will go live this year. Excuse me. Consensus developer Ben Edgington has published an update that predicts the ETH 2.0 beacon chain genesis will happen within the next six to eight weeks. So, you know, good news. Things are going to start to happen and that could really see a bounce in the price of ETH. Uh, in, a post, in a post announcing the launch of V1.00 release candidate zero, Edgington revealed the protocol's deposit contract address feature should be announced this week. The deposit contracts allows ETH to be sent between Ethereum and the 2.0 and is one of the few remaining updates needed to facilitate the rollout of the ETH 2.0 phasing. Now again, this is just allowing you to swap your ETH to ETH 2.0. It's not staking yet. And so here it says, however, the, the Pegasi Engineering Group development emphasised this prediction is not an official statement. So nothing's guaranteed at the moment. Uh, and he's just predicting that you'll be able to change your ETH into ETH 2.0 uh, probably soon. But the staking part is unlikely to happen until later on this year. And even that's not guaranteed. It could be the year after. So, you know, don't go rushing out to do anything just yet. We're waiting for further updates, but this is pretty promising. And this is what Ethereum needs. The quicker 2.0 happens and, you know, uh, layer two solutions and all get on board, uh, the more likely Ethereum is to really pump. And following on from that, here's something interesting. So developers are abandoning Bitcoin and Ethereum in favor of this little known crypto platform. And it's not really that little known at all. Polkadot. So... Uh, where was it? So there's a new player in town when it comes to cryptocurrency app development and it's called Polkadot. The platform, the platform is proving itself to be one of the first choice for developers drawn to its flexibility and fast growing community. Uh, recent reports have claimed Polkadot saw a 44% increase in developer activity for the 12 months ending in May, while Bitcoin and Ethereum both saw modest declines. Bitcoin gaming, crypto wallets and security solutions are among the projects already making use of the Polkadot platform. So this is why Ethereum 2.0 really needs to happen because 
polka dots coming and then it's not just poking up polka dot cardano's coming cosmos is coming there's a whole stack of platforms that are really starting to move but particularly polka dot it's getting uh uh, quite a good base around it at the moment and a lot of support and you know if you want to get into polka dot and haven't already the price uh, has come down quite substantially and it's still falling now and look again i think most altcoins are still going to keep coming down for a little while i don't think they're done yet so i don't think i'll be dollar cost averaging into any of my alts really at the moment it'll be mainly uh, bitcoin and ethereum that i'll be dollar cost averaging into at the moment but when i see a kind of leveling out a bottom formation with the altcoins that i'm really into i'll be looking to put some cash into those because they're not dead they're not going away in my personal opinion i think they're going to come back and i think they're going to bounce really really hard again it's just it's bits bit bits bits bitcoin's time right now and it's got to get out there and do its thing now last but not least this i thought was absolute gold no pun intended Actually, there was a pun intended. Peter Schiff, the gold bug. His Euro Pacific Bank is under investigation by tax authorities in five different countries, and Australia is one of them. Australian version, Australia's version of 60 Minutes had an interview with him, and they put some really tough questions to him, and he squirmed. Well, Mr. Schiff. Now, I don't hate Mr. Schiff. I like gold, and you know, I like that he's a salesman for gold but he has ragged on Bitcoin for so many years now. It has no intrinsic value. It's just used by criminals and people to dodge taxes and launder money and all the rest of it. Guess what his bank is uh, being you know, investigated for? Laundering money from well-known criminals and tax evasion. Well, if that is not irony, I don't know what is. Bitcoin is horrible, it's this, it's that, it's all criminals, it's everything. Gold is the true, and you know, gold's what everyone's going to go back to. Well, I still haven't heard anything from the IMF the other day. They obviously didn't make any uh, major announcements that I'm aware of, and they haven't gone back to a gold standard. So maybe gold's not the be-all and end-all, Mr. Schiff, and maybe the reason you cried about, you know, all the criminal activity that was happening on Bitcoin is because you needed uh, some of that criminal activity to come to your bank so you could make some more money and line your pockets. And I guess that's what's happened. Well, Mr. Schiff, well played. I guess you reaped what you sow. Oh, I shouldn't say that. I don't wish any harm on him. But, you know, for someone to slag off Bitcoin so hard and cryptocurrencies and, you know, talk about the whole criminal element and his bank uh, seems like it's uh, well versed in criminal activity and supporting criminal activity. So, yeah, I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens. But anyway, that's it for me. I'm not going to take up any more of your time. Again, we're waiting to see what happens. Sorry, we'll refresh this. 369 and we're at 11.7. So we're still at 11.7. It's hanging around there. And 368. So this is starting to come down. That means money is starting to come out of it. And I'm going to say it's probably going to come out of Bitcoin uh, as well. It's not just going to simply be uh, the altcoins, although the altcoins are bleeding at the moment. And I think they're going to bleed some more because people are going to be taking their money out, the profits that they've made. Uh, putting it on the side, most likely into stable coins, uh, and just waiting to see what Bitcoin does, or they're just going to pile into Bitcoin. We'll have to wait and see. But let's have one last look over here. So it's kind of just sitting, you know, steady around this uh, $11,700 mark. But because of this, I am concerned that we're probably going to see something more down to around about here come back and take back some of these gains and again possibly cover that CME gap not guaranteed we could skyrocket higher but yeah there's been a bit of exuberance here and the fear and greed index is leaning a little bit towards the greed side so I'm preparing myself for a bit of a pullback but look maybe I'll be wrong all right stay safe be kind to one another We've been on a pretty good gain train for a while, so maybe, you know, we might uh, see a pullback. Maybe we won't. I'll see you next time.